Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church as we continue our study about the parables. Uh, last time we were together, we got talking about the, the sign of the end times and what's going to happen after the tribulation, and we'll get into the looking for the millennial reign of Christ. And So we're going to be over in uh, Matthew chapter 24 and probably 25 before we're all done with this uh, study in the next few days. Uh, let's start off with Matthew 24. This is... Uh, He's preaching here and he's teaching and he says here in, uh, let's just read the first a few verses of chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not uh, be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world or the end of this age? He said, what's, what's going to be the signs of your coming and, and the end of all of this the age that we're living in? And then uh, Jesus went ahead and, and told them some things here. He says, and verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, or the beginning of the birth pains. And then he goes on and shares some more as he gets into the happenings of the tribulation. So we're going to uh, jump on down to uh, verse 32 in Matthew 24. And we're going to learn a parable of the fig tree. It says, When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when ye see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. The word it means he. So we could just read it, know that he is near, even at the doors. So he says, look at the fig tree. You want to, you want to see what kind of what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, when it's all going to take place. So look at the fig tree. He said, you see the tender shoots and that, and you know that summer's nice. Summer's just right around the corner. You don't know exactly uh, when it's going to happen. They didn't have calendars like we do, and we look at it, well, summer begins this day, but they look at it, summer's coming. It's, it's nice. It's close at hand. He says, so learn from that. And he said, that's kind of what it's going to be like. Then he says, uh, uh, you don't know when, but he said that uh, this, uh, likewise, when you shall see it, all these things know that it or he is even at the doors. And, and uh, Sharon, the, the idea was I was reading that, and we know that uh, he's he's coming, he's right there, it, it can happen when this is all going, and we know he's coming on a white horse, and I, I kind of get it in the picture in my mind that uh, he's sitting here, the king of kings, the lord of lords, he's sitting on his uh, big white horse, and his horse is chomping at the bed, he's wanting to come, come on down from heaven and get down here to earth, and, and to end this tribulation, and set up the millennial reign, and so Christ is sitting there waiting to come, you know, he's all excited about coming, and barely I stand to you now, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. We you know it talks about that later on. But my words shall not pass away. So what he's saying is true. It's going to come to pass. Whatever God says, and uh, we know this is God's words. Christ is speaking here. And he said these things are going to happen. It's a, it's a guaranteed thing. Uh, some people question uh, verse 34. It says, uh, this generation shall not pass to all these things be fulfilled. And so they said, well, what generation? Was he talking about the generation of the people that's living right there at that time? Well, he couldn't have been talking about them because they've been long gone. Uh, they've been forgot about most of them. They've, you know, this is all 2,000 years ago that, that he was telling this parable. So we, we, that generation isn't the one. So I believe that he's not talking about the generation today that we're living in uh, since the uh, uh, the uh, reestablishment of Israel, some believe it's since that, uh, the nation of Israel reestablished, and then, then all these are going to be happening within that generation. I don't think that's true. I think the generation, what he's saying is when, when these things are happening, when these things really happen, that's the generation that's alive. It's going to be alive through it all. And so we know that what the generation is, I'm talking of even up to a hundred years, but he's talking about this generation. So those people, that's when these things start developing. When these things start happening in the sequence that he's talking about, then that's the generation that's not going to pass away. Then they shall see the second coming. So uh, he goes ahead and tells us in verse 36, But if of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father. So nobody knows when it is but the Father. Uh, we know that we have the signs and we know the things that can happen, 
But he said, we don't know what's going to happen, uh, exact time it's going to happen. We just kind of know in general when it's going to happen. Okay, so as far as the days uh, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So the world's going to be going on. People are going to be given, given in marriage. They're going to be doing, living their life, daily life, out just living it out. And, and that's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. We're, as Christians on earth today, we're living out our life, you know, whether you, if you're a, a, you're a plumber or electrician or you're whatever you do, a teacher, whatever your life uh, work is, you're doing that. But at the same time, you should be looking to the kingdom, being ready for Christ to return. And we look for it not in the, this text we're talking about here has him the second coming we're talking about. We're not talking about the second coming for you and I as Christians. We're looking for him to come in the air to rapture us out. And so those are the days, that, the event that we should be looking for. But he's telling them here, you need to be looking for the return of Christ in Revelation 19. So they're going to be living out their life, things will be going normal. He said then all of a sudden, the end's going to come. So Noah was preaching, and he was preaching for about 120 years, 110, 120 years, and that they wouldn't listen to him. And so finally the day came that the rains came and the flood came and took them all away except for Noah and his family. So he's warning them there to be be ready. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. And then verse 41, two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. And said, what's therefore for you know not what hour your Lord does come. So he's talking about those two two people and the two different things, one in the field and one on the roof. And he says, are grinding at the mill. And he says, one's going to be taken and one's going to be left. Well, the one taken is taken in judgment. The one left is the one that gets to go into the millennial reign. So we're talking at the end of the tribulation, there's going to be that dividing, and we see that as we go on down through some more parables here. But there's going to be that dividing of those that are left, they're left to go into the millennial. Those that are taken are the ones that go on into judgment. Those are the, the, the whole idea is for the nation of Israel to receive Christ as the Messiah when he returns. Those that reje have rejected him, uh, those are the ones that will be taken. Those that have believed and trusted, those will be the ones that will be taken into the millennial reign. And so we see here, we're going to we'll stop here pretty quick with that, but that we, we know that those days are going to come. Watch therefore and know, because you don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know when the rapture is going to happen. So we need to be busy getting people saved, witnessing to those, and telling them all about Jesus. And if, if you know people that aren't saved, you need to be witness to them and sharing with them the gospel so they can be saved. So when the rapture happens, they'll be taken. In that case, they'll be taken, and those that are, have rejected Christ will be left behind. So we see the difference here in judgment, one will be taken, and then going to the one in the rain. But at the rapture, the one taken will be the one in Christ, and the one left behind will be left to face the tribulation. And we believe that according to Scripture in 2 Thessalonians, if you've heard the gospel and you've rejected the gospel before the, trib before the rapture, you'll not be receiving it after the rapture. So keep in mind the need to be witness today. For us as Christians, we need to be living it out. If you don't know Christ, what must I do? To be saved. You must repent. You must turn to God and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment and forgiveness for your sin. When you believe that, you trust that, you'll have eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. Lord, we pray we would be found faithful to serve and honor you. And for those who don't know Christ, we pray this would be the day that they would be ready by putting their faith and trust in Christ for when the rapture, when the tribulation happens and the rapture and all those things happen, they will be left behind. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name.